Sonic Frontiers is a good game. Twenty twenty two was such a good year for Sonic. The second movie was legitimately really good. Sonic Prime is good so far. Sonic Speed Simulator is one of the best Roblox games I've ever played. The only real downside was Sonic Origins. I'm not going to talk much about Origins here because I'm saving it for my review, but when the worst part of the year for this franchise was a collection of remastered versions of really good games and Sonic CD, that's how you know it was a good year. And of course, the year was capped off with, well, Sonic Prime. But before that, we got Sonic Frontiers, the next mainline game in the series after Forces back in 2017, and I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but Sonic Team actually managed to make a good game again. It's not perfect, not by a long shot, but the fact that we actually have a legitimately good mainline Sonic game, that's impressive. You gotta remember, the last legitimately good mainline Sonic game was Sonic Generations back in 2011. Since then, we've had Sonic Lost World, which was at best just okay, and Sonic Forces, which was a steaming pile of shit. We've had good Sonic games since Generations, there was Sonic Mania, which was a godsend for the franchise, Team Sonic Racing is decent, and even the Sonic Boom series had a good game with Fire and Ice. But all three of those games were developed by different teams, none of them were made by Sonic Team. But what makes Sonic Frontier such a good game? Let's take a look and see. Originally, I was going to record footage of the PC version of the game, but after getting through all of Kronos Island, the file size turned out to be 63 gigabytes. And that's just the first island. I don't have that kind of space on my computer. So you know what I did? I uninstalled the game, cleared up a bunch of space on my computer, hooked up my capture card, and recorded the Xbox version. Now, I don't have a Series X or a Series S yet. I am currently saving up to get a Series S, but right now all I have is a 1S. So, unless otherwise stated in the bottom right hand corner of the screen, all footage is being recorded off of the Xbox version on an Xbox One S. Anyways, let's get started with the story. The story of this game is complex. It's probably the most complex story we've had in a Sonic game since Unleashed. And the story isn't contained just within the game itself. There are two prologue stories to go with it. There's an eight page comic strip, Convergence, and a six minute animation focused on Knuckles, Divergence. We'll start with Divergence since the game starts right where Convergence leaves off. We start off on Angel Island where we see Knuckles guarding the Master Emerald and I already have to say thank you, Ian Flynn. It's been been so long since we've seen Knuckles actually guarding the Master Emerald and have it be important to the story. Anyways, Knuckles is internally monologuing about how he's the guardian of the Emerald and it being karma for what his ancestors did, giving us a brief recap of how they tried to steal the Chaos Emeralds, hurting the Chow in the process, and angering their guardian Chaos, who retaliated by turning into perfect Chaos and wiped the Echidna race out, save for the Nocturnus clan, if that even is still considered canon, and Knuckles' bloodline. And the only reason I recapped that to you is because I realized I forgot to do it in my review of Sonic Adventure. Whoops. Anyways, Knuckles thinks to himself about how if the Emeralds didn't originally belong to the Echidnas, then who did they belong to? Who built the shrine? And where did they go? Tikal then guides him to the Sky Sanctuary, which I guess is still intact? I always assumed it was destroyed at the end of Sonic 3, but I guess not? As he's venturing through, we see many Chow inhabiting the ruins, one of whom is trying to get a mysterious looking mask out of some rubble. When Knuckles helps it, he finds a strange gear lying on the ground and a strange part of the ruins that he's never seen before. Upon inserting the gear into this mysterious structure, he's teleported to somewhere unfamiliar to him. Thinking it's one of Eggman's tricks again, he ends up clashing with some robots. Upon defeating them in the most epic way possible, he's confronted by an even bigger robot and a mysterious girl. After a flash of light, we see he's trapped in some sort of prison with no way to get out and is also in a weird ghost-like state. Moving on over to Convergence, we see Sonic and Tails meeting up with Amy, who's battling some of Eggman's robots. Eggman is quoting battle dialogue from Adventure and Generations. Get a load of this! No way! I can't believe this! All systems, full power! Time for a change of pace! <laughs> See if you can make it through here, Sonic. Which Sonic finds suspicious. 
Upon breaking open the cockpit, they find it was just a decoy. Realizing that Eggman is probably trying to distract them, they set out to do what they were going to do, which is heading to the Starfall Islands, a group of islands that were once inhabited by an ancient civilization, and for some reason, the Chaos Emeralds were drawn there. Meanwhile, on Kronos Island, one of the Starfall Islands, Eggman gets a report from Orbot and Cubot that the distraction robot was destroyed and Sonic and Co. are likely on their way to the island. Doing what he came here to do, Eggman sets out with his new AI to gather the secrets of this ancient civilization's technology. Finally moving into the main game, we see Eggman attaching his AI to a structure identical to the one Knuckles found, saying that the ancient secrets will be his. Yeah, the ancient civilization is just called the Ancients. This isn't the first time the series has done this. Anyway, upon activating the structure, we hear... Is this a Sonic game or a horror movie? Anyway, something goes wrong and Eggman's AI pulls him into this structure. We then see Sonic and co heading out to the islands when suddenly they are ambushed and pulled into a mysterious portal which transports Sonic to a God damn it, again? Well, actually, this isn't Green Hill, but rather this is a world called Cyberspace, which molds itself around the user's memories, hence why to Sonic it appears as Green Hill. Upon escaping Cyberspace, a mysterious voice speaks to him, telling him that he is the key as he was able to escape Cyberspace using his own power. It tells him to find the Chaos Emeralds, destroy the Titans, and tear down the walls between dimensions, and then doesn't elaborate any further or answer Sonic questions. Red flag. Soon Sonic finds another portal and the voice tells him to return to cyberspace as many times as it takes. Yeah, given that it just said escaping cyberspace is impossible. Red flag. After exiting, Sonic receives keys that allow him to unlock the gate to the blue chaos emerald. After grabbing it, he finds Amy trapped in the same type of prison Knuckles was trapped in. Upon freeing her, the energy that was keeping her hostage goes into his body and the two realize that if she was trapped, Tails might be trapped too. After getting the second Chaos Emerald, Sonic encounters one of the Titans and the same mysterious girl who confronted Knuckles, whose name is Sage. She tells him to leave immediately and to not approach the Titan. However, of course, Sonic doesn't listen and tries to attack it, but he's no match as it flings him across the island. After waking up, he realizes he's going to need all of the Chaos Emeralds and some luck to be able to take it down. Sonic then finds Amy talking to this little creature called a Coco, which looks identical to the mask that Chow was trying to get earlier. Apparently, it's looking looking for its one true love, saying that if it doesn't express its feelings now, it may never get the chance. Meanwhile, Eggman wakes up inside of cyberspace and takes note of his surroundings. Sonic then goes to help a mother Coco round up her children, and upon reuniting with one specifically, their spirits escape their shells and go into cyberspace, apparently, at least I think that's what this symbol is implying. However, Amy does say she felt a sense of completion from that, meaning it might be what they wanted to happen. Later, Sage appears, telling Sonic Sonic his reckless actions endanger the world, which Amy refutes. However, Sage says that they're both ignorant. Amy and Sonic take note of how it seems something ruined this land and it's barely begun to recover. Back in cyberspace, we find out that Sage is actually Eggman's AI he uploaded earlier, having been given wider intelligence and emotion thanks to cyberspace. However, despite all her simulations, she can't find a way to safely remove Eggman from cyberspace, and despite his demands, she states that keeping him safe is her top priority. Upon Upon reaching the Coco's destination, we see a vision from the past and see two beings who look strikingly similar to Chaos, and this is the point where I really became invested in this story. I mean, what are the implications of this? Why do they look like Chaos? What's the story behind this? And if you look closely, you see the Coco are kept inside these beings. Maybe the two species have a deeper connection? We see the two reunite before they are killed by a blast, and the spirits inhabiting the Coco end up going into cyberspace. Amy thinks about how she saw it as a love that transcended time, and she wants to share that with the world, even if it may take her and Sonic far apart. This is incredible! Amy's not being treated as just a love-struck, obsessed stalker of Sonic, and is actually being treated as an actual character! After clearing open a path to the Titan, Sonic... Okay, I know this is nitpicking, but does this cutscene look squished to anyone? It's like they rendered it in a full resolution, but then squished it down to fit inside the cinematic bars instead of just cropping it. Anyway, upon reaching the Titan, Giganto, Sonic finds the last Chaos Emerald on top of its head. Grabbing it, he transforms into Super Sonic and... 
Oh. Oh my god. After that amazing boss fight, Sonic flies out to the next island, Ares Island, to take out the next Titan. However, upon arriving, he is immediately shot down by lasers and the emeralds scatter, making him have to hunt them down again. On this island, he finds Knuckles, and upon setting him free, the two brief each other on what they need to know. Upon grabbing the first emerald, Sage attacks Sonic with the next Titan. After escaping, Sage confronts Sonic, saying how her father was right about him. Well, that's an interesting dynamic there. Knuckles encounters a group of Coco soldiers who need to link up with another squad. Upon reaching their destination, we see another vision from the past of the same chaos-like beings now in the place of the soldiers, readying themselves for defense before their defenses are wiped out by the same unseen force that killed the other Coco on Kronos Island. We then get to see more of Sage and Eggman and really get to see their father-daughter dynamic begin to form. Eggman also says this line, Oh, I hate that hedgehog. That doesn't change the fact that he is a formidable adversary. I respect him, but I don't have to like him. Which really adds some depth to his character. Sonic and Knuckles then help out more Coco who are supposed to fall back to a bunker, and Knuckles leads them there, which makes sense actually, remember that he was the commander of the resistance and forces. Upon making it to the bunker, Knuckles notices that the structure looks like ruins on Angel Island, making Knuckles wonder if the survivors of this attack fled the Starfall Islands and colonized Angel Island. Also, we see a brief flash of Sonic 3, which is always appreciated. The two are then ambushed by enemies, and after taking them out, Sonic and Knuckles have a talk in what is honestly the best scene in this whole game. I cannot put into words how good this scene is. Just, just watch for yourself. Ages ago, my people were wiped out by a cataclysm. I know the Coco faced something similar. It reminds me I'm the last Echidna, that I'm alone. You may be the last, but you're not alone. You've got us, Knucklehead. I'll admit, I do envy your lifestyle. Freedom to go where you want, when you want. So do it. Get out there and live a little. Maybe I could. But first, I need to be back to normal. So hurry up and get me back to normal. Anything to get you away from me. <laughs> Bless you, Ian Flynn. Bless you. After clearing up a path to the Titan, Wyvern, Sonic grabs the final emerald from its head, transforming to Super Sonic again, and... How that hit my foot! <laughs> After beating it, Sonic heads to Chaos Island, where he is once again shot down by lasers and the emeralds scatter. Here, he finds Tails, and the cyber energy he's absorbing is starting to seriously affect him. The two set out to find the emeralds, and Sonic once again encounters the next Titan. Upon evading it, however, Sage is unimpressed. After seeing more of the past, they realize whatever this entity that attacked the island is, it's definitely strong, with Tails saying it's on par with Dark Gaia. I appreciate the Sonic Unleashed reference there. After finding a trash death egg robot, what the fuck is that doing here? I don't remember Eggman attacking the Starfall Islands and forces. Anyways, they power up its laser to reveal a hidden tunnel to one of the emeralds. After grabbing it, they find another Coco who is an apprentice to the top pilot, and they need parts to finish a weapon. After finishing the weapon, the Coco then becomes concerned as their hero didn't show, meaning something might have happened to them. Tails relates to this, saying it's like how he fell apart after Infinite attacked. They're actually addressing that? Got water everywhere. <laughs> I'd like to apologize to my cat. During that spit take, I accidentally spat on her. So now she's kind of wet on her back. <laughs> I'm sorry, Lou. I didn't mean to spit on you. 
Anyways, continue with the video. Sonic, of course, becomes concerned, but Tails says there's more important things right now. Sage then confronts Tails, asking him if he trusts that Sonic is doing the right thing. Tails states that he does, as he has a lifetime of data to back it up, which Sage appreciates, but still states it's all for nothing and the impending disaster can't be prevented. She then asks Sonic what his end goal is, and Sonic gives this gem of a line. It varies. Sometimes it's a spinning sign, sometimes it's a big old ring. Sage clarifies that she means what does he want to accomplish, to which Sonic responds with gathering the Chaos Emeralds and saving his friends. Sage asks what if the voice that commands him is leading him to disaster? Is that also a red flag? Crimson. He says he'll stop them, but Sage says his arrogance will be his undoing. Back in cyberspace, Sage tells Eggman that the only possible way to escape is by forming an alliance with Sonic. Eggman refuses, but Sage reminds him of the times he teamed up with Sonic in the past, like aboard the Ark and when they faced Neo Metal. I am really appreciating the references in this game. Eggman says those were purely out of desperation, as if he isn't desperate now, and tells her to find another option. We later see her helping Eggman, with him stating how proud of her he is, making her smile. We then get another amazing scene, which, again, I can't put into words how great it is. Just watch. Sonic? Am I a burden to you? Wow, and how did you come to this well-thought-out concern? Whenever there's a crisis, I'm either running away or standing on the sidelines. You're always rescuing me when all I do is follow you around. Hey, who was it who stopped Eggman from blowing up Station Square, huh? And who broke me out of prison, or saved me from the Deadly Six's trap? I... then I'm wildly inconsistent. Uh, dude, relax! <laughs> You've got brains like Eggman, speed like me, and can fly with your butt. It's okay if you still need help sometimes. That's just part of growing up. The fact that they're actually addressing Tails' inconsistent characterization instead of ignoring it and pretending like it didn't happen is fucking incredible. After helping the Coco and freeing his spirit, Tails realizes that once this is over, he needs to go it alone for a while in order to grow into his full potential. Sage sees the two bond, realizing they're a family born of love and not genetics, which is everything she wants. She becomes emotional at remembering her relationship with Eggman as she starts to change colors and, I won't lie, Seeing this for the first time made me emotional too. I legitimately cried at this scene. That's how heartwarming it is. Anyway, after clearing this hellish pinball minigame, more on that later, the location of the Titan, Knight, is revealed. You all know the drill at this point. Sonic grabs the last emerald from its head, transforms into Supersonic, and another amazing boss fight ensues. This one ending with... Yeah. Back on Kronos Island, oh, I'm sorry, Ray Island, it's the same island, six towers open up. The voice commands Sonic to shut down the towers to open the final lock. Upon opening each one, we get a massive lore dump on the history of the Ancients. Here we go. The Ancients, which are the chaos-like beings we saw before, were an advanced civilization coming from another planet. As it turns out, the Chaos Emeralds were also native to their planet. One day, a mysterious entity arrives to wipe out the planet, so the Ancients use the Emeralds to power their ships and escape the planet right before the entity slices the entire fucking planet in half. And I thought Eggman blowing up half the moon was dark, which by the way, the moon still looks intact in this game. Celestial bodies don't just rotate 90 degrees when they lose Mass, Izuka. Anyway, upon getting close to Earth, they suddenly lose control of their ship's navigation as something is pulling the emeralds towards the planet. The thing that was pulling them there was the Master Emerald. They end up settling on the Starfall Islands, creating cyberspace as a way to harness their hopes, dreams, and memories so their planet will never truly be gone. However, during one of the Elder's lectures to the kids, one ancient pulls him away, stating that the entity that destroyed their planet followed them, and now this world is in danger. This time, however, they do not flee, but rather they create machines called Titans that harness the powers of the Emeralds to fight it. However, in case that doesn't work, they have a backup plan. A small group will take the Chaos Emeralds and settle around the Master Emerald, however they hope it won't come to that. But given how the Emeralds were surrounding the Master Emerald many millennia later, 
Yeah, I think we know what happened. So the four titans... Wait, why only four? It's shown that they only need one emerald to power a titan, so why not make seven titans, one for each emerald? Anyway, the four titans piloted by the ancients attack the entity, but it's not working. The one piloting the fourth that we haven't encountered yet has an idea. He will allow it to bind itself with his titan, and the other three will seal it in cyberspace. The others try to object, but the entity kills him, so they go along with this plan. While shutting down each tower, Sonic slowly becomes more and more corrupted until eventually he freezes completely, being basically dead. Sage urges Eggman to get back into cyberspace, with him questioning why, but it's too late. Surprise, surprise! It turns out that the voice that was commanding Sonic this whole time was, in fact, the entity that destroyed the Ancients' home planet. Oh my gosh, I am so surprised. Okay, in all honesty, as predictable as this twist was, I literally called it when the first cutscene leaked months before the game came out, it was still handled pretty well. Eggman wants to blast it out of the sky, but Sage stops him, telling him that she found a 0% chance of success in her simulations. Sonic's friends aren't giving up, though, with Tails saying Sonic worked too hard to give up now. They circle around him and... somehow cure him by going back into cyberspace? Wanna run that by me again? Realizing this might be their chance, Sage convinces Eggman to reluctantly join forces with Sonic as the three of them set out to find the Chaos Emeralds one final time. Excuse me, uh, the, uh, the fuck did you just say? When the hell did the emeralds scatter again? Did it happen off screen? Traveling through Oranos Island, Sonic and Sage manage to find six of the emeralds with Eggman finding the last. Sonic transforms into Super Sonic to go after the entity which is controlling the final titan, Supreme. And this fight, man, this fight is fucking awful. But I'll get more into that later. After damaging Supreme enough, the entity retreats out into space to assume its true form. Sonic chases after it, along with Sage, now piloting the abandoned Titan. The entity, known as The End, appears... as a moon. Huh? Using their combined power, they... do something, I guess? Yes, the end monologues for about four minutes before trying to kill Sonic with a laser, but Sage blocks it. Sage then launches Sonic through the end and it charges up an attack, but Sage flies the Titan into it, destroying it, I guess? And also sacrificing herself in the process as she tells Sonic to... Please... look after... father. Ow, my heart! Tails, Amy, and Knuckles are somehow freed from cyberspace again, with Sonic flying down to the ground, letting go of the Chaos Emeralds. We then see Eggman standing at a cliff, mourning Sage's death. In a mid credit scene, we see Team Sonic getting ready to head home and start their new individual adventures, with Amy thinking of bringing Cream and Sticks along. Wait, Sticks is canon? After the credits, we see Eggman in his base, tapping into cyberspace as Sage's voice calls out to him. And that's the story, and wow, that's a lot! I mean, seriously, look at how long the video is now. That's just the main story beats. That's not covering any side story elements or the egg memos, which, by the way, we will get to in a little bit. But for right now, let's just get to talking about the game itself. Sonic Frontiers is the first open world, oh sorry, open zone game in the franchise. After collecting the first emerald on Kronos Island, you're free to explore the world as you please. You do have set objectives, and while the story ones you have to do in order, there's nothing stopping you from getting all the Chaos Emeralds that aren't story locked before freeing one of your friends. For the sake of this video, I did everything in the order the game wanted me to, but you can do it in any order you want. Want to unlock the entire map by clearing these puzzles? You can do that. Want to complete all the cyberspace levels 100%? You can do that. Want to take down every guardian in the area? You can do that. Want to level up as much as you can? Yes, you can do that. The choices are yours. Eventually, though, you will have to do what the game tells you to progress the story. Sonic controls beautifully in this game. Well, on the main islands, at least, and the cyberspace levels, not so much, but we'll get to that later on. For starters, he no longer feels like a tank. You can actually freely move in all directions. He can also do the drop dash, making this the first time modern Sonic has had this ability. It is a little awkward to activate, though. Unlike Mania, Forces, and Origins, where you only have to press the jump button twice, here you have to do it three times. 
Sonic also has a new move called the Psy Loop. Hold down the top face button while moving and a trail will follow him. If you connect the trail, it will have varying results depending on if you're fighting an enemy or not. Of course, Sonic does still have the homing attack and boost, but they're activated a little differently here. Unlike previous games, the boost isn't triggered with the left face button, but rather the right trigger. Also, the homing attack is now mapped to the left face button like in Sonic Unleashed, rather than the jump button of, well, every other game that has the homing attack. Here's something cool though. If you have max rings, you get an even faster boost. And if you form roughly the shape of an infinity symbol with the Psy Loop, you have infinite boost for a short amount of time. Sonic also has a number of combat moves he can do, and unlike in Unleashed, where they felt like a gimmick due to the Werehog, here they feel like a natural extension of Sonic's abilities. You can unlock more moves by collecting skill points and spending them in the skill tree. Yep, this game has a skill tree. Now, these three here that are off to the side can't be unlocked with skill points, but rather they are unlocked by freeing Amy, Knuckles, and Tails. My favorite move by far has to be the Sonic Boom. It's OP as fuck, just look at this. Sonic can also parry attacks by holding down both bumpers at the same time. Unlike most games that have a parry system though, it's not time-based. You can hold the buttons down for as long as you want, which does lead to some hilarious moments of Sonic floating in midair. You can also see your stats in the bottom left corner. You can upgrade these by talking to the Elder Coco and Hermit Coco. The Hermit Coco can upgrade your attack and defense by giving him these red and blue seeds you get from defeating robots, busting open crates, and... Ugh fishing. The Elder Coco can upgrade your speed and ring capacity by bringing him lost Coco you find around the island. So basically, it's the Korok seeds from Breath of the Wild. However, there's one problem I have with this. When giving the Hermit your seeds, he upgrades your strength and defense based on how many seeds of each type you have. However, with the Elder, you have to choose what to upgrade and have to do it one level at a time. What the fuck? Not to mention that upgrading these are kinda pointless. Your speed stat only applies to your wall running speed, not your ground speed, and your ring capacity just means you can hold more rings, but the default level of 400 is generous enough as is. Plus, like I said earlier, getting max rings gives you a faster boost, so the higher your ring capacity, the more rings you have to collect to get it. Now let's talk about the cyberspace levels. If I'm being honest, the cyberspace levels are the weakest part of the game. They're stylized exactly like the boost era levels. There are four level themes. Green Hill, of course. Chemical Plant, of course. Sky Sanctuary, and City. Not any specific city like Station Square or Central City, just a generic city. First off, why are Green Hill and Chemical Plant here again? Do you guys realize that if you count Origins, this is the fifth anniversary game in a row to have both Green Hill and Chemical Plant? And before you say Mania Forces Origins and Frontiers weren't anniversary games, yes. Yes, they were. They may have been released one year after their respective anniversaries, but they were still designed to be anniversary games. Actually, Origins and Frontiers were originally intended to release in 2021, but got delayed a year due to COVID. Seriously, what's with the constant reuse of Green Hill and Chemical Plant? I don't have a problem with Sonic Team bringing back old levels. The problem I have is them bringing back the same two levels over and over again. If you're going to be reusing old levels, give us some variety instead of just doing Green Hill and Chemical Plant all the goddamn time. And that's not the worst part about the cyberspace levels. There are a total of 30 cyberspace levels, and by my count, 21 of them reuse level designs from past games. Not even joking, here's a list. 1-1 is Windmill Isle Act 1 from Unleashed. 1-2 is Windmill Isle Act 2 from Unleashed. 1-4 is the 3D sections of Green Hill Act 2 from Generations. 1-5 is the 3D sections of Chemical Plant Act 2 from Generations. 1-6 is Green Hill Act 1 from Generations. 1-7 is City Escape from Adventure 2. 2-1 is the 2D sections of Green Hill Act 2 from Generations. 2-2 is Dragon Road Act 3 from Unleashed. 
2-4 is Radical Highway from Adventure 2. 2-5 is the 2D sections of Sky Sanctuary Act 2 from Generations. 2-6 is Sky Rail from Adventure 2. 2-7 is Sky Sanctuary Act 1 from Generations. 3-1 is Green Forest from Adventure 2. 3-2 is Savannah Citadel Act 1 from Unleashed. 3-3 is the 3D sections of Sky Sanctuary Act 2 from Generations. 3-4 is Windmill Isle Act 3 from Unleashed. 3-5 is Savannah Citadel Act 2 from Unleashed. 3-6 is Rooftop Run Act 2 from Unleashed. 3-7 is the 2D sections of Chemical Plan Act 2 from Generations. 4-1 is Metal Harbor from Adventure 2. And 4-6 is Chemical Plan Act 1 from Generations. And those are just the ones I recognize. There could be more. Also, why are Skyrail and Radical Highway here? The story behind cyberspace is that the environments are based on Sonic's memories, but Skyrail and Radical Highway were Shadows levels in Adventure 2, not Sonic's. And also... These do not control well. Just like in Forces, Sonic doesn't have a drift. He turns automatically. Except for in 3-5, where the drift is a gimmick. Now, in the Adventure 2 levels, this is fine, but the Unleashed and Generations levels were built with the drift in mind, so not having it here makes these levels feel awkward to control. Each cyberspace level has four objectives. Complete the level, get an S rank, get a certain number of rings, and collect all five red star rings. Completing each objective gets you a vault key, which can be used to get the Chaos Emeralds from the vaults. Now, despite the Chaos Emeralds being needed for story progression, the cyberspace levels themselves are not aside from the first two. 1-3 to 4-9 are all completely optional because the cyberspace levels are not the only way to get vault keys. You can get them from defeating robots, busting open crates, and... Ugh, fishing. Lastly, there's the memory tokens. These are scattered all around the islands and are needed to progress the story. However, finding them lying about the islands is not the only way to get them. You can also get these from these chest pole thingies, defeating robots, busting open crates, and... Ugh, fishing! Okay, you know what? Let's go ahead and talk about these. Located on each island are purple fishing tokens that you can use when going through this special purple portal to encounter... Big the Cat, and you give them to him to be able to fish. Okay, well actually these fishing sections aren't as annoying as in Sonic Adventure. Firstly, the controls aren't ass. Secondly, they're optional. You don't need to do them to reach the final boss. Thirdly, they're an easy way to get whatever you need to progress the story or even level up your stats and skills. You can also buy these egg memos. These are basically voice logs that Eggman makes while trapped in cyberspace, and a lot of them actually reveal a lot of lore. For example, remember how the ancients look almost exactly like chaos? Well, according to Eggman, DNA analysis from cyberspace shows that chaos is a descendant of the ancients. Now, at first you might be wondering how that's possible. Wasn't it previously stated that chaos was a mutated chow? Yes, and that is still canon. According to more of Eggman's logs, and this is me reading between the lines here because it's not outright stated in-game, the ancients that stayed on the Starfall Islands died out due to this unfamiliar territory, their spirits possessing the icons they had in their chests, thus becoming the Coco, while the group that settled around the Master Emerald with the Seven Chaos Emeralds ended up evolving into what we know today as the Chow. So that means Chaos was a Chow who, due to the exposure of the Master Emerald's radiation, mutated into a form that resembled his ancestors. And this isn't just speculation either. The writer Ian Flynn himself confirmed this in his podcast. Can't get any more official than the person who wrote the story confirming it. The rest of the logs give us more insight into the wider Sonic world, clearly written for people who aren't that familiar with the franchise, as well as giving us Eggman's perspective on his relationship with Sage, going from seeing her as just another AI he made to seeing her as an actual daughter. Also, I like how they managed to use the Baldy McNose hair joke in a way that's actually funny for once. I'm not going to adopt Baldy McNose hair, though. My uh, dignity has limits. Another thing I like about this game, the continuity. This game references so much, and I mean so much from past games. There's references to the classic series, the adventure games, Heroes, Shadow the Hedgehog, Unleashed, Colors, Lost World, Forces, even Team Sonic Racing and Sonic Riders of all games get referenced. Which means the Riders series is now officially canon. 
Really, the only major games that don't get referenced in dialogue are Sonic 06, for obvious reasons, and Sonic Generations, oddly enough. Now, yes, while a lot of these references do have the same amount of subtlety as a Family Guy cutaway gag, it's just so nice to see the team actually care about the continuity for once and establish that these things did happen in the past. Now, I'm not saying I want to see this level of past game reference continue in future games, but I feel like here it was necessary after 10 years of games barely acknowledging the past. One thing I don't like, though, the ending feels kind of rushed. Let's get the big one out of the way. The final boss is a major letdown. But to establish that, first I'm gonna need to talk about the other bosses. Here we go. Holy shit, these bosses are incredible! You play a supersonic, something that's normally reserved for the final boss, and your attacks are even more powerful! You can fucking fling Giganto in the air! Holy shit, you can throw Wyvern into a fucking mountain! Oh my god, he just sliced Knight in half with its own sword caliber, and I know you'd be proud! And this music! Oh my god, I have no words, just take a listen! These bosses are a treat. The sheer surprise on my face when I first fought Giganto, I honestly cannot describe in words what I felt then. But then there's the final boss. First off is phase one, Supreme. For starters, it's basically a copy paste of Giganto, but a little bit harder. And secondly, halfway through, it grows these beautiful cyber wings, and yet back in the fight, they're gone. The Titan is just floating in the air. Then there's the true final fight, the end. My god, this boss is underwhelming. It's just the hacking minigame from earlier, but a lot harder. Now, don't get me wrong, I like Ikaruka-style games, but after three really amazing fights, the final boss just being this for four minutes is underwhelming as hell. Also, I feel like the boss itself was rushed. The text at the beginning says to work with the Titans, plural. I think originally the Titans were gonna come back, most likely being piloted by the spirits of the ancients who piloted them originally. Because if not, then who the hell is Sonic talking to here? He took your home world. He took your lives. Are you going to let him do it all over again? I need your help. We can end this, please. Also, what is with this design? A moon? Why a moon? We've seen eldritch abominations like Dark Gaia, and yet the ultimate embodiment of death itself is a moon? Okay, I'm adding this part in later because while I was editing this script, the director of this game, Morio Kishimoto, said on Twitter that the end has no true form. Its form is whatever the person observing it perceives to be a symbol of death. Meaning, what we see it as is not what Sonic and Sage see it as. My guess as to the reason why we as the player see it as a moon is because the moon is seen as a symbol of death in pop culture with stuff like the blood moon, eclipses, etc. Another thing I want to point out that I didn't originally put in this script is that the end implies it has multiple forms and incarnations. This makes me wonder if beings like Solaris, Dark Gaia, and the Time Eater might have some connection to it. Like, maybe they're pieces of it that broke off and didn't get sealed in cyberspace? But I mentioned puzzles earlier. Okay, look, the script writing process is getting really long at this point. I'm on page 10 and I've only covered like maybe two thirds of what I wanted to talk about. So I'm finding it really hard to find natural segues in my writing. 
So, spread across the islands are a bunch of puzzles you can do. These can range from stepping on the colored light without breaking from the path, shooting hoops, or even playing Tetris. Seriously, this one is just Tetris. There are also some puzzles that can only be done at night, but the map gives you no indication of whether or not it can only be done at night. You might find yourself heading to a certain puzzle on the map during the day, only to find out that it needs to be done at night. And sometimes this could be the last puzzle you need to do on that island, so you just have to sit and wait for it to turn night. Completing these puzzles unlocks more of the map. After completing every puzzle and unlocking the full map, you have the ability to fast travel to any of the cyberspace portals. However, there are also puzzles that are tied to the story. The first three islands each have a puzzle that you do before fighting the Titan. That rhymed, but I didn't intend for it to. The one on Kronos is a mirror puzzle, and it's annoying. The one on Ares is a glorified claw machine, which is really easy once you get the hang of the controls. And the one on Chaos is a giant pinball machine in which you need to get 5 million points. 5 MILLION POINTS?! Jesus Christ, Sonic Team! Now about the islands themselves. According to the menu, there are a total of five islands. Except that there aren't. While the menu says there are five, in actuality there are only four, and only three unique themes. Ray Island 4 is just the northern half of Kronos Island 1, and you're blocked off from going to Ray from Kronos and vice versa. And Oranos Island 5 has the exact same environment theme as Kronos and Ray. Holy shit, I just realized the islands are named after Greek gods. Like, no joke, that's not even the script. I just realized it when I said Kronos and Ray, because in Greek mythology, Kronos and Ray were the titans who were parents of Zeus, Poseidon, Hades, and, you know, all of their other siblings. The reason for this is because originally, Kronos, Ray, and Uranos were all originally one island, and as fellow Sonic Tuber Sam Procrastinates found out in a stream, the outline of Kronos slash Ray is still visible in the water on Uranos. That's kind of creepy. Is he even moving? Oh, he's moving. Oh my god! <laughs> Wait a minute! Everyone yeah. stop! Everyone stop! <laughs> Hold on! Everyone stop! I just made a realization. Look at the shadow in the water. That's the shape of the entire Kronos Island, the first island. Kronos, Ray, and Huranos are your basic grasslands, Ares is your basic desert area, and Chaos is a bunch of mountains with a volcano in the middle. Also, Chaos Island has a lot of 2D sections, and just... why? Why with the 2D sections? Leave 2D to classic Sonic games. Please. Give us a full 3D game for once. There's also a lot of stuff that's not in this game that I felt would make a lot of sense. Like a photo mode, for example. Okay, another thing I'm adding in later, because literally while I was writing this script, the official Sonic Twitter account announced that we're getting three major DLC updates for this game. Update 1 will contain a jukebox mode, a photo mode, and new challenges. Update 2 will contain a celebration of Sonic's birthday, meaning it'll be coming in June. More challenges, and new Coco designs. And Update 3... Oh boy! Update 3 will contain new playable characters and a new story. And by the looks of it, we'll be able to play as Tails, Knuckles, and Amy. You guys realize that the last time we got to play as those three in a mainline Sonic game was in Sonic 06, which was over 16 years ago now? Needless to say, I'm excited. I'm just remembering how in 2017 they tried to make us pay $2 for Super Sonic and Sonic Forces, and now we're getting essentially a whole new game for free. Oh, how the tides have turned. And you can of course bet that I'm going to be doing a redive of this game once all three of the updates are out. Overall, Sonic Frontiers is a legitimately good game. Like I said, it's not perfect, but it's good, and that's what matters. I give Sonic Frontiers a 7 out of 10. This game restored my faith in Sonic Team, and I am really looking forward to what's coming next. The skies ahead are vast and clear for the Sonic franchise, and by the looks of it, 2023 is going to be another great year. As said in the song, we're only at the beginning of this one-way dream, and I am all here for it. This is a series I have loved since I was three years old, and I am going to continue loving it into the foreseeable future. With that done, it's about time I get back to work on my backlog. I've got my redive of Sonic 3 and Knuckles that still needs to be done, and I've also got my review of Sonic Origins. Those will hopefully be coming next month, and then after that, it's back into the saddle for the dual marathon. I want to try and get that finished this year. It's been almost two years since I started it. This is 
was kind of going off script here, but I also want to try and get back into the saddle for streaming. You know, it's been a while since my last live stream, and I, I want to get back into the saddle of doing that because I actually really do enjoy streaming. Um, so, as of right now, depending on when this video goes up, mark your calendars, March 1st is when I'm going to return to streaming, and I've got something special planned for the month of March in terms of streaming, so look forward to that. Uh, but, as for now, thank you guys so much for watching this review, and I will see you in the next one. Spider